Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the post game show. If it's your first time, your second, third, however many times we've actually done this show, welcome in and thank you. Before we even get started, I have to give a big thank you and shout out to this South Carolina Gamecocks fan base. You have continued to show support. Whether you like the takes, whether you hate the takes, whether you're here to watch some film, whether you're just here to watch some dude ramble on about nothing, thank you so much. It is greatly appreciated. We have hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, well on the road to 1,000 subscribers, and we are still continuously growing over there on X at Joseph Griffin JG. So I just want to thank the Carolina fan base for all the support, and I hope we can continue to build together. But you're not here to hear a soppy whatever thank you. You're here to talk about the game yesterday. And that game yesterday was definitely one that I did not see coming. Matter of fact, what we do on this show, if it's the first time you've been here, is we call myself out, whether it's for doing something good, whether it's for doing something bad. The first one, we could go ahead and knock out the way. I had a score prediction of 24 to 13. Now, while I was somewhat on with the defense, I did not expect the defense to do as well as they did, as much as I thought Vanderbilt would kind of hurt themselves, which, don't get me wrong, they did, but this defense played tremendous last night, um, or <laughs> last night felt like a night game with how doom and gloom it was outside. But yesterday afternoon, and then the offense, I I kind of expected it to be one of those boring, dragging games. Let's just get out of this game healthy. And, well, Logan said, no, I know you think we should do this. I know the weather says, hey, you should probably run the ball. No, what we're going to do is we're going to have Spencer Rattler throw the ball 36 times. And we are going to run it. 24, I think is what it said, 24 times, with one of those being the bad snap. So, everything about that game, score-wise, was definitely not something I saw coming, or not in the way it did. Offense was kind of anemic. No, I don't even think that's, that's not the proper word. They had crucial drops in crucial moments, and, and, and something I went back and looked at, and I'm going to break this down for you. The first half stats, and I put it over there on X whenever the first half ended, South Carolina outscored Vanderbilt, outscored, outgained, my apologies, 233 yards to 53 yards. Now, you read that and you read just that. You probably assume you've got at least a shutout on the defensive side, which they did. But then you see the offensives and you're like, man, we you at least got 17-21 maybe. Like, this is a 21 nothing game at half or 24 nothing game at half. And it's only 13 to nothing. Missed extra point. Now, it's it's not like you couldn't move the ball, obviously, because you moved it with 233 yards, right? You had 16 minutes time of possession. You had an average of six and a half yards per play. You went three of six on third downs in the first half, 50%, which is tremendous compared. But – what killed you were the drops. I think there was three drops, and there was four penalties for 20 yards that winded up getting you two. I don't think they were all on the offensive side of the ball, but I do think there was at least one or two false starts. So that first half is just like, man, you, you, you're moving the ball. You just had some drops in crucial moments. But then the second half, they put it together. They didn't do anything differently from the first half to the second half in terms of scheme, in terms of concept. It's just they didn't have the same amount of mistakes. They only had two penalties for 20 yards in the second half, and they only had 254 total yards. So, I mean, only 20 more yards from the first half, except this time you put up 34 points with a blocked touchdown from the special teams. So, the offense is out of the ball, never really – wavered from what they wanted to do or what Logans wanted to do. They just kept going and they just didn't make as many mistakes in the second half. Now, something that is still concerning to me is the lack of push up front. This is like, I believe this is the third time that particular starting rotation was out there this year. 
So at some point you think you see a little bit of continuity, a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of trust in one another, but we're still having some mishaps, some miscues, getting beat across the face, stuff like that. But overall, you cannot pl- complain about a 47-6 to six game at all. Total, the offense had 47 points, 487 yards. They had 136 yards rushing and 351 yards passing. The defense, for the first time all season, held an opponent to under 20 points. I got to ask that to Shane Beamer yesterday. Not only did they hold them to under 20 points, they held them to under 10. They held them to six. And just ask, because there was definitely some defensive schematical changes. They had a three down front, which they started off with at Texas A&M, which he reiterated over uh, in the post-game presser yesterday. And they kind of got away from it, but they stayed in it for a majority of the game until the backups came in and they kind of went back to their base 4-2-5. But ask about it. Just and then to my opinion, I think that plays more to South Carolina's strength is that three three five kind of combination look with uh, sometimes walking down a linebacker to make it look like a four two five kind of thing. They even at one point lined up in a three four from the looks of it. So I loved seeing them come out in that in that particular setup with Debo with Blanton, and then with Nick kind of right there all chilling in the middle, and then you had three down linemen. And then it allowed you to also have two or three safeties on the field, and then every now and then you can have – you had Nick and Memorial drop back and play to three, cover three. So because they weren't necessarily a threat in the passing game, it definitely made it a whole lot easier to stay in that three down front. Now you are going to give up yards in the three down front. That's just how it is. Typically, that's how it's going to be, unless you are filling gaps complete. I mean, perfectly almost as a linebacker group, and they did it from time to time. They still met. They 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 still gave up. Uh, let's see, 130 yards. Not not bad though. So, with that being said, I I loved every bit of it, and that's why I asked Shane Beamer, and I hope they stay in it moving forward, especially against Kentucky, because. They did a better job of setting the edge, and you're going to see that on the film tomorrow or Tuesday for the defense. But tremendous game all around. This was by far the most complete game that this team has played. Like, it was Furman, and then it was like for a half against Georgia. But this right here of all three phases, special teams still lacking in the, the – again, another question I got to ask Shane Beamer – was about the special teams finally getting after a punt and scoring a touchdown. They still do have to get better in the kick return, punt return game, but they were able to finally get a hold of one after they've been so close there in the special teams. But best of all three phases that you've seen this year. And hopefully you can build off of this momentum and you're like, hey, four and six, two more games left. Kentucky just had a – Pretty rough game, getting kind of their doors blown off against Alabama at home. And now they got to travel to South Carolina. Who wants to do that, right? Like that, surely that's what you think is in their mind. Like they've already clinched bowl eligibility. What kind of motivation do they have to even come in here next weekend? And then you have this game where you beat a team 41 by 41 points at night. Drew, I think is his name. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. It's coming. It's going to be 730. It's hopefully going to be loud. It's hopefully going to be a crowd that is there to enjoy and embrace the moment of something that, hey, about half a month ago, a lot of people didn't think you would be in this predicament. You kind of just hoped you would. And now you are. Now you are in the spot where you have a chance to still go bowling. You still got your two hardest games remaining on the schedule, but they're at home where a crowd can make a difference, where neither team has really looked great. So now we're here, right? Now the post-game show becomes, hey, we did this, but we can only celebrate that for a little bit because now we got to look at Kentucky. And I can tell you this. If you play the way you played on the defense side of the ball yesterday, the same way you play next weekend, you might have a chance. Leary is – not that great of a quarterback. He can make you pay, but I like that 3-3-5 package a whole lot more than I like the 4-2-5 
because it allows Nick and Ward to also help in coverage. Like Shane said, it allows them to sometimes drop eight back in coverage. And if they want to run the ball, they can run the ball. And you you need to stop that. But I would prefer you to limit the passing game right now. And let's just make them make mistakes. Now, Kentucky is not a team that makes mistakes. So it's going to be easier said than done. But it is something that you can build off of from last week or this past weekend and move into it. And then on the offensive side of the ball, we just got to stop making the mistakes. We still have the drops. I get it. Weather conditions were not the greatest. But the drops were also not just this weekend either. Still got to do a better job of doing that. Shouts out to Xavier Leggett. The dude is just a man. He moved into number five, uh, or t- yes, the, the fifth fifth most receiving yards in a single season with 1,093. He's only like, I think it was like 60, 70 something yards away from being in the second place or something like that. He had nine catches for 120 yards, 12 targets. There was one that he. Two, he probably should have caught and tell you he should have caught as well and probably would have definitely secured that um, second place and might have gotten a whole lot more because one of them probably was going to be a touchdown. But it is what it is. Josh Simon continues to be a menace. And, man, I don't know if he has any eligibility left. That is something I have to look into because, obviously, if you still don't know, I'm still – Believe it or not, learning the roster. While I know most of the names, eligibility stuff still isn't 100% on my end, and we'll get better about that. But, man, I don't know if he can come back or not. But the past two weeks, he's had, I think, 12, 13 targets, and he's caught all but, like, one. And he's gone for, like, 120-something yards, and he breaks every single tackle. He averages – he averaged yesterday 10.8 per carry – or, sorry, 10.8 average per catch. I mean, that's huge. Mario Brown was able to do what he does best and make a guy miss on his targets. So Omega Blake kind of got going. Uh, Braswell got at the passing game. Juju got the passing game. And unfortunately, Juju is out for the remaining of the year with a broken collarbone. Um, I hate that. Nick Harbour finally got another catch. Luke Doty got a catch. I mean, the ball was spread around from this team. It's just the rushing aspect that I still worry about. You take out that 72 yard, 72 yard run by Mario. You're still kind of just lackadaisical, and you want to be better, and you need to be better, especially against Kentucky. Kentucky is going to be a good front seven that you're going to have to run the ball to have success. Not telling you you can't come out and throw the ball. Not telling you you need to be forced in balancing that run-to-pass ratio, but you're going to have to have some type of success. So with that being said, you celebrate that you're four and six, as you should. You should celebrate your four and six because, again, the where you were a month ago as a program, this is a, a good place to be currently. And now it's kind of your turn, fans. You, you wanted, you demanded that this team put on a good performance, and they have for the past two weeks. Was it the best? No. Last week or this, this game was arguably the best of the season. But you wanted – the ability, the possibility for this team to compete for a bowl game. About a month ago, any fan I talked to, that's all they wanted. And until then, they were kind of like, eh, I'm not going to spend my money, spend my time, whatever. What's well, here? And and the two biggest games, because the past two games, the crowd has been, eh. And I'm not one to call out a student section, but I, hmm. <clears throat> there you go. That's that's all we'll say there. But this is these last two games, you as a fan base need to show up. I know it's not the season you wanted. It's not the season you expected. Heck, it's it's on record over here of me saying 93 was their best best case scenario. Eight and four was mo- more than likely. And here we are fighting for six and six. So I get it. Trust me. This isn't where you thought you would be. I promise you this isn't where the South Carolina program thought they would be but they've answered the first two calls with a very pretty much empty stadium if if you ask me compared to the times that i've seen before with like i I mean it gets um Furman and mississippi state stuff like that but 
it's it's time for the fans to show up now. It's time for the fans to show support for this program and show why you are arguably one of the best fan bases in college football. Because you, if you support a guy like me, <laughs> you can support a team that you actually care about. So that's where we're at right now. We're at the point where, hey, we've knocking down the first two milestones. We're at the third one. You have a chance to win this game. I don't know what the line's going to be. I'm going to assume it's going to be Kentucky by like five and a half, six and a half when it opens up. You have a chance to win this game. Spencer Rattler at home is a great thing to have. You as a crowd is a great thing to have. At night, when you have that sandstorm, the whole Giroud thing there, you can affect this game in more ways than you know. It's just time to show up. That is it for the post-game show. We are thankful for every single one of you once again, and we are thankful for all of the veterans. I know this is a little bit late, but didn't have a show yesterday, so thank you for anyone that is watching or have loved ones that have served. Thank you for giving me the ability to be able to sit here today and fight for my and everyone else's freedom. That is it for the post-game show. We will see you tomorrow for Office of Film Review. Until next time, see you later.